welcome to part two of the Heath Kit 4510 oscilloscope repair. Now on part one, I repaired the horizontal section. Had some issues back there on the driver board due to moisture. And that's working fine. But as you recall, the vertical channel one was not working, whereas channel two was. And that's the best scenario because I can use one channel to fix the other. Now as you saw, I had this Wismo Gizmo box in the beginning of the video. Pretty wild, huh? That is the D-Lab Digicizer. Anyway, there'll be another video about that device in the future. But in this one, we're going to continue with the repair of the Heathkit 4510. This is the Heathkit SO4510 that I recently repaired the horizontal sweep issue with. Now we have another issue to tackle. Channel 1 vertical is not showing on the screen. Okay, Here's channel 2 and you can see the trace is fine. A little bit dirty there on the pot. But when you go to channel 1, there's nothing. Absolutely no trace on that screen. Okay, Even if you adjust the DC balance, it does not appear on the screen. But it is there. It's just up here somewhere because it's imbalanced. Watch when I turn off the scope. See that? A little blip. Trace is there. It's just it's off the screen because we have an imbalance problem in the vertical amplifier. So let's get in here and see if we can figure out why. Well, here's the vertical input board and pre-amplifier, I guess we could say, for the oscilloscope. All right, now Heathkit always does a beautiful job on laying these out to where they're very easy to work on. So over here is channel one, this is channel two. All the components that make up channel one, they did the same thing on channel two. And this is really nice to troubleshoot because if you envision like a stereo amplifier, okay, you have a preamp section and then you have final output section, right? So if you have one bad channel, you can use the other channel to troubleshoot it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this scope. All right, so I know this isn't easy to see, but this is the schematic for the vertical input board. Once again, Heathkit does a great job. You see a little dotted outline. So there is my vertical board. There's my horizontal board. There's my deflection board, right? So the vertical board has preamplifiers and then some attenuation for your input signal. And it goes along and it's amplified and all that good stuff. And then it makes its way over to the deflection board. So envision the deflection board like your final output transistors in a stereo amplifier, right? So let's say that this is just a stereo amplifier we're working on, the left and right channel, okay? Channel one, channel two. So we know that channel two is working. So I'm gonna simply do some voltage comparisons from channel two to channel one, and I'll work my way back until something doesn't look right. And then we're probably in the right area. All right, to simplify the troubleshooting, I decided since my vertical position appears to be the issue, I'm going to focus on the transistors in that area immediately. In this case, it's called Q106 and Q107. And between those two transistors, the emitters have a pot, and that is the vertical position, okay? So they're saying that the collectors of these transistors should be balanced, okay? So here is my good channel. So I'm going to go to Q106 collector, and they say it should be around 3 volts, okay? 2.66, and here is 107. I've got to be very careful here. 2.56. Now I'm going to go to channel 1 which is the one that we have the issues with. Okay, so here is its Q106. Get in here. Looks like I gotta be very cautious. See now we're at four volts in the other transistor. 
was at 1.29 volts. So yeah, there's an imbalance, okay? Now, obviously we have something maybe on the base that's feeding those transistors. There's some common kind of offset, okay? So now I'm gonna work my way back. Now, obviously you can't see the schematic while I'm doing this, I'm sorry, but if you have this scope, you should be able to follow along with your schematic. So 106 and 107 are imbalanced. So I'm gonna work my way back. I'm gonna to go to the base of 104 and 105 and check those voltages. So here are the base voltages on the good channel of transistors 104 and 105. So there's 105, it got like negative 2.6. There's 104. Almost identical. Now I'm going to go over to the bad channel. Here is its 105. Remember, this lead is right in the middle of these two transistors, so if you slip, Kerpawe, right? So we got like negative 2.7 on that one. Here's negative, or I'm sorry, here's 104. Negative 3. So there's a slight offset there, okay? So we're on the right track. We're going to move our way down to Q103. And what's the mate to that one? Okay, 102, obviously. Okay, so now let's go back a little bit further, but I think we're getting close. All right, so now we are back on Q102 and 103. Here is the base of 102 on the good channel, about 1.9 volts. Here's the base on the defective channel. You can see it's about uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts lower. So you know what I'm going to do for the heck of it. Turn off the scope. I'm going to get some different little clippity doo dah leads in here. And let's, for the heck of it, measure the emitter base voltage on these two transistors. Because if we go back any further at this point, there's some dual FETs. And I really hope those aren't bad, but it looks like our imbalance is right down here at Q102 and 103, and that's throwing it off up the line, okay? So let's check these emitter base voltages. All right, I'm on the Q102 of the good channel, and we're seeing 0 0.7 volts drop across its emitter base junction. That's a good sign. That transistor is on, okay? So I'm going to turn off the power, and let's move our leads to channel 1. Alright, I have my leads now on channel 1's Q102 emitter base junction. Turn on the power. Huh. Now that doesn't look too good. Which is actually a great thing if that's what it is. But let's take the meteoroid, kill the power, and plug this thing. Let's go to diode check mode and compare those two transistors. So for the heck of it, let's check both junctions. So here is base emitter on the good channel. We saw that 0.7. Here's my base collector. Same deal. Go back down to the one I suspect. Here's the base emitter again. It's high, and here is the base collector, and that side's okay. So obviously we have a bad transistor right now. This is one of those funny Heathkit numbers. It's like a 417292, I think. According to the schematic, that's actually a 2N5771, which I don't have any of, but I do have an ECG106 which is a direct cross, according to their website, which is NTE now. So, it's a different case style, but I'm going to put this transistor in, and let's see if the problem with the channel 1 goes away. That'd be super, wouldn't it? Alright, so at this point, for the ease of troubleshooting, 
I am not going to take the time to remove this vertical board, okay? It'd be a heck of a job. It's a lot of screws. All these switches go through the front panel. It'd be a major deal. Probably a couple hours to get it apart, change the transistor, and put it back together. So what I'm going to do is replace this transistor on top of the board, okay? So I'm going to clip these leads right up against the case of the transistor. I'm going to take our new guy. I'm going to lay him on top of those leads and solder it in with a very special Weller solder station that I have. And this will just... All right, so I'm going to clip this guy out and leave as much lead as possible. Okay. There's the old one. And then I'm going to take the new one and luckily Heathkit always identifies your lead so it has the EBC right on the board which is very nice. You see this pad on top which goes to this resistor so we really don't have to worry about stressing the solder connection on that one. But the other two that go under the board I have to be very careful how much heat I put on there because I don't want those to disconnect right that'd be a bad thing. Well that fancy Weller station I had decided that it didn't want to fire up so I'm switching to my Heiko okay so I'm getting this jobber in here have to use a magnifying glass guy sorry old guy here okay so I got the uh, transistor in place the base is facing you the emitter is right here with the tab collectors over there so I tack soldered the base to that resistor that was feeding it okay so that will support it. Now all I have to do is rock this guy into place, get the leads to line up, and I'll tack solder the other two on. There it is. New transistors in place. All we can do now is fire it up and hope that that trace on channel one will center like channel two does. Let's plug back in. See what we get. I don't see any smoke. By the way, there's the old grid illumination. I don't see any traces yet. Oh, it's because I haven't turned on the channels. So here's channel two. We know that worked, right? Still does. That's good. And here's the channel that didn't work. Cross the fingers. Oh, look at there. <laughs> All right. So that's very cool. So now channel one is on the screen as well as channel two next thing to do is get a signal in this thing and see if it can actually display something and then I'll calibrate it well look how much trouble that little signal transistor caused right who knows how long this scope's been out of commission because of that little guy now before I go any further you saw in my last video I changed out the caps on the positive and negative 15 volt power supplies but I have not changed the caps yet for the 5 volt supply which is these three 6,000 microfarad caps okay they're actually kind of hard to find but I ended up locating these 5600 microfarad caps at 15 volts that would drop right in here and this scope is not going to know the difference between 6,000 and 5600 okay so I'm gonna get these swapped out first because if they are leaking or causing any kind of trouble it's going to affect the performance of the scope and I had no intentions of leaving those in in the first place well there's the new filter caps installed for the 5 volt circuit there's the old snozzeramuses that came out of it let's fire this thing up take a look at the trace and see if it can actually process a signal on both channels. There's here we are channel one. This was the channel that was not operational. I'm gonna use the built-in calibrator. Go to the input. There she is. Looking good. You can see some noise in the switch. But it looks like channel one is working. Over here, channel two. Do the same thing. There she is. You 
see channel 2 is not quite balanced. So this thing really needs to be calibrated. We'll cover that in part 3 of the Heathkit 4510 restoration. So now that you watched this video, if you had an oscilloscope and you suspected you also had this vertical imbalance condition causing the trace to be off the screen, you really don't have to go through all the voltage measurements and all the diagnostics. If you have the time, you can take your meter, put it in diode check, and just go through and check the transistors, okay? It may take a little bit longer, but if you have a defective transistor, you're going to see it. So in this case, I've got my meter set up in diode check, okay? This is a PNP transistor, so my negative will go to the base, and my positive goes to the emitter to C1 junction. There it is. Go over here to the collector. And there's that junction. Now if you had an NPN transistor, you'd simply put the positive to the base. I got one over here. It's kind of hard to see. But I put my positive to the base. And take my negative. Go to that emitter. And then go over here to the collector. And you'd see those two junctions. So you could dance down the board and more than likely you'll isolate the bad transistor. Now many times the transistor could fail and there could be other components that are also bad because of that. You may have an open resistor. There could be a shorter cap somewhere that took out that transistor. But as you saw in this repair, simply putting in the new transistor brought the channel back to life. So I'm going to take a big mission accomplished on fixing the vertical section of that Heathkit scope. And I'm sure a lot of you are saying, Terry, why are you spending so much time on that thing, right? Well, here's why. I grew up on Heathkit. Christmas time, I would drool over that catalog, hoping that there'd be a Heathkit box under the tree, all right? And a friend of mine sent me this cool Heathkit history book on test equipment. And it happens to talk about the IO 4510 scope in here, right? It says it was introduced for Christmas in 1974. It's a 15 megahertz scope. And it was the first of the 4000 series scopes, which incorporated a new horizontal form factor, whatever that is. And Heathkit said that the 4510 was the finest scope we've ever offered. And I've got one here. How cool is that? So that completes part two of the Heathkit 4510 repair. At this point, it appears as though the scope is fully functional. So in part three, I'm gonna clean the controls, adjust the power supplies, and then we are going to calibrate that scope with a Heathkit calibrator. Stay tuned, we'll see you again.